Okay, uh, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. In this video, we're going to define the concept of an open set and a closed set, which is really an extension of the concept of an open ball and a closed ball. Uh, so, uh, firstly, we'll start with the definition of an open set. Open set. So, uh, an open set uh, is a set, an open set. Um, an open set, let's say, uh, let's call it, what should we call it? We'll call it U, uh, which is a subset of our metric space X. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a proper subset. It could be the whole space. Uh, an open set U, which is a subset of X. So if we, uh, if we um, have our picture ready, uh, here is our metric space X, uh, and it also has a distance function defined on it. And now we have some set, and I've forgotten to draw them with uh, the dashed lines. Well, open sets are always drawn with dashed lines. Um, so this is the um, open set U. An open set U uh, is a set uh, which contains points, um, little u, which is an element of big U, such that uh, U, uh, little u, is an interior point is an interior point of big U. So an open set is a set in which all the points are interior points, which means that if you have some little uh, point, little uh, little set, uh, little element U, uh, which is an element of big U, the definition of interior point was that there exists an epsilon neighborhood around this little point U, which is completely contained within the big set U. So for all little u is an element of big U, there exists an epsilon, which is a function of u, so I'll put epsilon, which is a function of the point u, uh, such that uh, the ball uh, centered at u uh, of this size epsilon, which is, will vary depending on what point you're at, uh, is completely contained within the set big U. Uh, that is the definition of an open set, that for all points, all points, little u, you can find an epsilon. So this radi this ball here will have a uh, radius epsilon of little u. I can find you an epsilon u, uh, which is greater than zero. Sorry, I should have said that, greater than zero. Uh, so some radius greater than zero, such that when I take the open ball around that point of that radius, there it, it's completely contained within big U. That is the concept of an open set. Uh, so let's have a look at uh, this concept in R3, basically, because that's where it all came from. In fact, actually, uh, it's easier to draw if we just work in R2. So let's work with R2. R2 uh, with the usual Euclidean metric on. So we're dealing with the Euclidean plane here, uh, where the distance between two points x and y is the usual uh, metric, i.e. it's the length of the line between them. Okay, uh, so um, if, I uh, if I draw an open set then, it, look it will look something like this. So you draw them with the dashed lines to show that it does not include the boundary. So Let's have a look and understand why this blob that I've drawn here is an open set. Uh, so it does not contain this boundary. It converges. Any point as close as you like uh, to this boundary will be in there, uh, will be in the set. Uh, but um, the actual boundary of this does not is not contained within the set. So this is the set U. Then if I take any uh, little u that can get as close to this boundary as you possibly like, but not actually go on to the boundary, any little u as close as you like to the boundary, uh, then, I, then there will exist, if I make the uh, radius really, really tiny, then there will exist a ball, there will exist a ball uh, around that point u of radius some tiny little epsilon, uh, such that uh, that ball is still completely contained within U. So I can make the radius of the ball small enough that it's still contained in uh, U. So that's the intuitive picture you should have of open sets. And if I, you know, they don't have to be connected in this way, which we haven't defined rigorously, and we, I don't know if we are going to. Uh, but um, if you um, if you had another set here. Um, if you had another set here, um, another bit of the if you if you um, if you defined the open set to be this this blob here along with this blob here, uh, then that's still an open set because if I take any points in any, in either of these blobs, uh, then uh, I can find you a tiny little ball. So it's 
consists of these um, unions, effectively, of these blobs which do not contain uh, their boundary points, is basically uh, what you can think of open sets being. Now, uh, the definition of a closed set, then. So the definition of a closed set... Of a closed set. So the definition of a closed set is that it's the complement of an open set. So a set, uh, let's say C, uh, which is a subset, uh, potentially not a proper subset, of the set big X, is a closed set if uh, its complement is open. So if uh, C complement, or which is defined to be all the points that are in the metric space X, uh, but which are not uh, in C, so X minus C, um, is, uh, is, a, is, an, is an open set, is an open set. So if all the points that are uh, are not in an open... So basically the complements of open sets are closed. So if you have a set C and you want to know when it's closed, take its complement and ask, is it open? So if we look at the complement of this great big blob, it's... Uh, if I get my blue pen, it's all the points. It includes this boundary because the boundary isn't in the open set U. So it firstly includes the boundary. And then it includes all the points that are outside of that. So all points outside of that. Every other point in R2 that isn't in here. So all the points that I'm colouring in blue like this. And it includes that boundary. So in a way you can think of open sets as being these sets that have no boundaries. That just converge on their boundaries. Whereas closed sets most definitely have these boundaries. Okay. Uh, so another example of a closed set is uh, if you consider a uh, if you consider a blob which actually contains its boundary so something like this so this now consists I'll color it in blue since blue seems to be what we're using to denote um, closed sets uh, so it consists of all the points inside the blob and it consists of the of the boundary of the blob itself uh, now, if I want to check that this is a closed set, I need to check that its complement is open. So all of these points outside of uh, the blue blob, I need to check that these, um, this is the complement. So I need to check that that set is open. Now, what was the definition of open? That every point in the set should have a epsilon neighbourhood around it, uh, which is still contained within the set. So if I take any point that gets arbitrarily close to this blob, uh, but it can't be on the boundary, so at some point that isn't on the boundary, it's getting arbitrarily close to the blob, well, I can still find you. I can still find you a tiny little radius, such that if I take a ball around there, uh, the um, that open ball is still going to not be within the blob, i.e. it's going to be within the complement of the blob, i.e. this complement of the blob is going to be open. Uh, so the blob with its boundary is going to be closed. Okay, uh, so that's the intuitive sense of what closed sets are. Uh, in the next video, we will uh, show that all open balls are open and all closed balls are closed, uh, which is uh, a nice because... Um, that it would be a bit awkward if those uh, names didn't sort of, you know, weren't consistent. And then the video after that, we will uh, see, uh, we will compare how this definition of open and closed sets uh, compares with the topological definition of open and closed sets.